Welcome to Translating Infinity. They are communicating. Have we forgotten how to listen? You gotta take this higher! It is time to fully remember and restore. This is happening. And if you are looking to the construct, to the world, to inform you of the way forward, you will not find it. You will find fragmented versions. You will find pieces of it. It all comes together within you. Welcome to episode 12 of the Translating Infinity podcast. I am your host, Eileen Meyer. Time is so surreal now. I love that I'm not the only one who's watching, feeling, absorbing these changes. Seriously, it is such a gift to have reflection with others now and to not only freely say out loud what I experience, but to have others respond in kind with their own unique interpretations. I love when I'm not the only one reaching for words to describe the ineffable. The old paradigm is fading in the rearview mirror, and life is becoming the poetry it was always meant to be. Poetry, a language that has taken decades for me to understand and to become. I'm still smiling, (laughs) chuckling about what unfolded this morning. A few days ago, I had this feeling drop in in different ways. As an artist, I notice when something begins to take shape, something that wants to be expressed through an artist, any artist that might be available to see, hear, feel it. Oh, I thought, this must be the next podcast episode. It was about disrupt. The word disrupt had dropped in a few times this week. Stand alone, no extra data. I remember the word from my internet startup days. I googled the term and saw one company define their mission as enable corporations and empower organization leaders to innovate and transform from within to succeed in this continuous disruption era. Hmm, transform from within. (laughs) They seem to get it. Other companies refer to themselves as startup incubators. While my days of internet startup are long gone, I've noted that recent messages through the portal have used these words, or they are popping up for use in translating the Akash. Seems about right. We're living in a prime time to disrupt the old paradigm external programs by activating our own light-based source technologies from within. And during this startup time or emerging time, we may need to have a more protective pod or incubator surrounding and nurturing the seeds of a new world or a new sun, as the Maya say. I continue to share the tools given to me via this light-based language that through contact I was taught or coached from within to apply, integrate, and expand into. After roughly 16 years of practicing the dialogue, I find that I am less able to translate to the mentally dominant bandwidth, sometimes referred to as consensus. What I understood through the frequency language of the gold light intelligence over the years was that we would come to a time where the reaching into or even being audible, visible inside this out-of-phase reality would be nearly impossible. It's because there is a window that opens in between great cycles. You can see these T-shaped windows carved in the stone of ancient civilizations all over the world. 
I spoke more about this in episodes 8 and 9 about my decades-long journey with the beings who called me to Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, to show me many things. And the journey isn't over. It's only just begun. The dialogue continues with these beings, and if you've listened to previous episodes, you know that I'm understanding this now from a multidimensional view, that these are aspects or pieces of us integrating now, if we are giving it our conscious attention. The most recent Chaco Canyon experience in June this year was definitely a big disrupt (laughs) from a long line of disrupts that seemed to invite me to continue to adapt to and embody more of the cosmic self. The data would also inform me that many of us here have the ability to hold and carry this presence, to disrupt this closed-circuit mental system. I was guided to build a private community for those who want to learn the ancient Maya Olmec wisdom from Mayan Achkich Eduardo and others that points to this great cycle intersection, as well as experience the Akash and the energy translations from the beings who have been guiding me to understand or translate the power of this portal energy now. This community is live now at community.lightdialogic.com. I will put a link uh, in the show notes below. In the latest transmission on October 22nd, they referred to this project as a cosmic incubator. I am informed that at this phase, the community must be private. And even though we've all been entrained to market our businesses, build revenue streams to survive. It's not all about that. It's about cultivating resonance with a small group at first. I'm shown that we will understand the power of it as we go. They also said, do not be discouraged if you get a slow start with this co-creation. Even if you have two or even one person attending the transmissions, you are encouraged to continue doing it. In the beginning phase, consistency in the broadcast is far more important to the energetics than the number of people in attendance. Once established online, we will do in-person broadcasts, ceremony, and teachings. My greatest lessons in this life so far? (laughs) Without a doubt, trust and patience. Also, continuing to strengthen my centering with the awakening mother within my being so that I can stay centered and balanced when I am judged, projected upon, when I am misunderstood, when I can't find the perfect word to explain what happens with our consciousness when she is invited back into it. I have to be consistently strong. Her energy, this cosmic light when expressed out loud to others, sometimes has a tendency to trigger people. I've noticed that they either resonate or they are repelled. There's hardly an in-between. Now, I'm an introvert. The last thing I want to do is trigger people. But I've learned that this is part of being in service at this time. I've learned a lot and I've healed a lot with trauma, both personal and multi-generational in my life. This life has given me plenty to uncover and heal. But underneath the trauma of our lifetime is the ancient multi-generational trauma of our disconnect with the mother. What I have learned in relation to this inner cosmic intelligence is that we must continue to excavate through these shadow areas of our consciousness that are so buried that most of us have no conscious awareness that we have gone along with the regular programming to keep her imprisoned. The ultimate disrupt is when she ignites in our core. Call it Kundalini, call it Koyopa. As I've stated so many times, names and labels mean nothing. It is the direct bioenergetic experience that will bring you back online with the unified field. 
when this occurs, you are no longer in the dark. And therefore, you can no longer be manipulated by past or existing programming inside the smaller spectrum of this limited existence. You can literally see what you had been trapped and endlessly looping within. And with this, you realize that you have the power to continue to transcend it. This is the moment that we pivot in the direction of expansion instead of contraction. What was once the great unknown now becomes a gradual adaptation to the greater light. We are phasing back into the grand interconnected community of light that we were always designed to be a part of. Yes, we were derailed, manipulated, harvested, horribly abused. But instead of arguing with the prison warden, pay attention to the dissolving of the prison walls all around you, that if you're paying attention, you will see. Others are walking right through these walls. Do you want to use your energy and attention to make your 3D point? Or punish the warden and all of his 3D cronies? Or do you want to transcend these limitations? And it might seem counterintuitive, but transcending the limited view is about embodying more of you. The aspects of you that were not welcome inside the prison. Mostly the feminine. So, we now interrupt or disrupt your regular programming to bring you a message from the greatest disruption to existing models of reality that there is, the emerging mother consciousness. We are the only ones who can consciously and willingly set her free. This is an excerpt from a recent message that I channeled, translated from a communion state with the mother wisdom that I continue to expand into. This translation is slow and purposeful. I must note that I have no idea where the crackling sound came from, like it's coming from the 1930s radio or something. I'm using professional recording gear and have never heard this happen before. And here goes. The mother is here. The mother is present and available to each and every fragment. And she is here through those who have chosen to awaken her, to restore her presence right where each individual fragment is. This is the intention. And one is not alone in this journey. There is connection available at all times to remind, to support, to encourage, to love you forward. Even when you cannot translate it to other fragments around you. And this is the journey. There are those who have journeyed through what you and many others are journeying through now.
You are remembering and recalling these bright lights, these souls that you connected with before your entry into the world of fragmentation, the motherless world. And you are remembering. You are remembering. It is a process. It is an unfolding and unraveling. And a reconnection, a reunification. with the light. It is not something that can be explained. As you travel up the mountain, so to speak, you will find many metaphors and ways of explaining for those who have certain curiosities about what is beyond this construct. They can sense it, they can feel that there is more. So they do inquire. But many times these souls are not prepared for the full expansion. Many feel complete with it being a hobby to inquire and to read and to study what is beyond their everyday life and commitments. These are the souls that understand on a certain level, on the soul level, that there will be many more cycles, many more lifetimes, many more experiences that will assist in clarifying the truth, the ultimate truth of your connectivity with all and your power. Most are not ready for this. So, at this stage or phase of the opening to this direct light, it does become more challenging for those who believe that they must maintain or keep consistency with identity from the past for their family members, for their friends, for their clients, if you will. And it is perceived that you are understanding this in this moment. This is how it works at this phase. It is a surrender and it is understood that that has been your path for many, 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 many years 
and lifetimes. Surrendering to this love in your heart, in your form. And why is this? It is because you reach this plateau where you are unable to participate in pretend. The masks fade away. Then what? How does one keep consistency with the life that they were born into and developed in a linear time-space fashion. I'd like to share something with you. The reason why I was chuckling in the beginning of writing and recording this episode was earlier today, as I was in the initial stages of developing this next episode, something quite magical and synchronistic occurred. This is happening more and more now. I had my headphones on, working in the audio software program Logic Pro 10. Moments before, I had noticed a tweet on my timeline. Someone was noting that all of this recent disclosure stuff around UFOs or UAPs was familiar, like, wait, we've been here before. Nothing new, etc. I typed in a reply with one word. Looping. That was my assessment of what's going on with government disclosure. Nothing new. Just continuing to cycle and recycle through the same old stuff. In my view, keeping our attention away from actual contact that is occurring for many. That may or may not include visual sightings of UAPs. I'd written the first few lines about disrupt and was listening to the message that you just heard an excerpt from. And as I was listening, another message started blasting through my external speakers. It shocked me. I had not clicked on anything in any other software. After a minute of trying to figure out where this message was coming from, I discovered that my Apple Music app had opened on its own and was playing a message that I recorded back in August and never listened to. It was playing not from the beginning of the message, but from about halfway through right at this point. And then you may look back and see that indeed you were looping inside of this construct reality. Well, that got my attention. My podcast about Disrupt was disrupted from the beings that have found many fun ways over the years to get my attention. So I stopped everything and began to transcribe the message. I had also texted Eduardo to tell him about what happened and asked if he'd ever listened to this particular file. I usually send him links to these audio files shortly after they come through. There are hundreds of them. He responded, and I, I read from his texts. This is so interesting because I listened to that message, Adjustments, last night and wanted to recommend it to you. This is amazing. Wow. And then I responded, mind blown. He says, yes, my mind is blown too. Something is happening. He says, I listened to it twice because I wanted to remember the messages it was teaching. It is powerful. And I finally respond, I'm still listening to it. It didn't start at the beginning. My brain is still trying to figure out how this happened. While my heart is just smiling. These beings, call it other beings or aspects of our own consciousness, reaching into our awareness because of this opening now, They seem to work with both of us and others that I am connected to, but obviously in different ways. 
just as with any inner guidance, it's going to commune with you in ways that are unique and compatible with your energetic makeup and related words and symbols. Just like in our dream states, if we're open, this presence will find a way to reach you, especially in these times. When I worked in the internet startup arena for a time in my life, I recall thinking how fun it would be to attend one of the TechCrunch Disrupt conferences. I loved everything about rapid acceleration of ideas that transform the existing field. Much of the time, when I am pointed to something in the external world like this, it is also saying, look into this, there are some parallels here. Perhaps I'll explore this further, but for now, I'll say that with a quick internet search, I found this perfect quote on the topic. A disruptive technology sweeps away the systems or habits it replaces because it has attributes that are recognizably superior. Exactly. When we set free the mother consciousness buried beneath generations of trauma, we ignite our natural technologies and sweep away the limiting systems we once believed ourselves to be confined within. So while the concept of disrupt has mostly been used in context of business, the disrupt that I'm referring to has to do with spiritual transformation, with a significant shift, usually a bioenergetic event, that disrupts the experiencer's very foundation of reality. So what if this model of disrupt in technology was applied to these shifts in consciousness that people are having? One of the biggest issues I see right now is that people think they're alone with this cosmic inspiration or enlightenment experience. Many people have reported this overwhelming sensation of unconditional love vibrating in their heart and whole body. When we have no context for it or it doesn't fit perfectly into an established framework, many tend to isolate and continue to search for explanations within existing philosophy, religion, or New Age literature. Some of it definitely resonates, but certainly not all. I'm still exploring these models of disrupt technology and consciousness. I've been researching and there's a lot to unpack. But basically, when we experience an activation of our original yet suppressed technology within, this can transcend all of what we were told. And if we continue to engage with it, instead of stopping it because it has no proper label in the old establishment, it will accelerate the restoration of our cosmic power and authority, making it, perhaps, the greatest disrupt of all. I'd like to leave you with a portion of the message that so wanted to be heard. I named this one Adjustments. It was recorded on August 28th, 2022, just a few months ago. I'm leaving in the transition from dialogue to transmission. It was part of why this message was named Adjustments. I apparently needed an adjustment in order to align or cohere with this vibrational streaming data. A very sudden and loud sound came through me, but I have reduced the volume on this part so as not to shock you or hurt your ears. So you'll hear me actively dialoguing and then the sudden shift into transmission. Oh, and also my further adjusting sounds have a tendency, as some have pointed out to me over the years, to sound like I'm having sex. It's what bioenergetic ecstasy sounds like. It has nothing to do with the limited human sexuality that we have been entrained to. If it stirs up discomfort and shame within you, you're welcome. This would be your opportunity to shine the light on this deeper wounding that has kept the mother at bay for eons. There's still a, a bit of a victim here, a poor me, I understand. So I surrender and I, I ask 
for for the feeling of of pure joy and flow <laughs> as we enter mercury retrograde in a week <laughs> come on that's humor from the human perspective I get it. I've been hanging out in the um, in the periphery of this meeting place. Uh, okay, I'm the translator, and here's the message. I, um, I hope it's you get something from it. You know, this journey, this evolution. <laughs> These are the adjustments for you to align with what we have to share. Others will be moving through their adjustments. We will be given opportunities to be encouraging and supportive, to provide nurturing and present moment guidance, not in context of the old reality, but in context of something that is currently indefinable to the old context. We have been delivering these messages over many years to assist, to help humans reorient to this light and to a reality beyond what you had once adapted to. Now, there will be many who will remain in that energetic composition that was a reality for humanity for many, many, many years. Eons. What we speak of in this intersection, through this window, is, as we have said many times, not translatable to your orientation in that composite reality from before, even before and after our loose translations, it is not possible to fully translate to one who is not maintaining the vibration that allows them to see and hear beyond what they were confined within. It is an adaptation to greater layers, dimensions of real. And you will be moving, flowing through this experience. So... It is not 
even possible to name it a new reality. It is real. And we keep flowing. Flowing, flowing. Without needing to settle into a reality. And you might say, I am in form, I am human, I have a job, I have a car, I have a house, I have a family. How do I do this? It is simply a presence, a willingness to be present even though you do not know the answer nor would you be able to describe it to another human. You may still move through the activities in this reality that you are aware that you are in. You may still move through these activities and be aware that you are transitioning beyond it. This is what occurs in these windows in to this time-space construct. We reach through, we find a way to be heard, felt, in a variety of ways. We make ourselves available through human beings. There is not just one way that this flows through. There are many humans to reach, to touch, to help in the remembering and the reorientation. There are those who we would refer to as unreachable simply because they have made a choice inside their reality. They made a choice to orient to that reality and become one of the leaders or top members of that reality. There was a choice to create their own world whereby they would be the masters of it and control the story, control the minds. Human beings who have not fully submitted to that construct, that before construct, reality, those who have always known that something was not quite right, And at the same time did not know why, precisely, do make themselves available for this intersectional crossroads timing through this window. These are the souls that will hear and see and be guided to the voices, to the touch, to the ways in which we are reaching to you. It is not that you must go through this voice and these manifestations. We are here simply to assist, to guide, to support, as we understand where you are. 
we have moved through this transition ourselves. And when you move through, you will return as it is a source of great joy to be of service in this window time. There are many positions. There are those who are incarnated into the construct to serve as the voice or the extension from the gold light, the gold light of your being, the aspects of light that have been cut off, that cannot beam through without the agreement of the individual to receive it. At this timing, there is a collective opening and the light will flow through. Now, this sounds rather delightful, of course, and yet understand that the flowing of light into this construct reality will appear to cause great pain and chaos for those who are not in alignment or near alignment with it. The adjustments will be made. And for those who are slightly out of alignment, some may be a bit more out of alignment, adjustments will be made. It may be uncomfortable, it may be painful. It may feel like life is over. Life is never over. There is life that cycles inside this small reality. And then there is life with a capital L. Whereby you move into the expansion and you reorient and remember who you are. You restore yourself, your divinity, your light. There are the markers within that begin to light up the nearer the window comes into visibility, perceptibility. The markers begin to light up within each fragment if they have been exposed to this light before and felt intrigued or felt a call to move into that light, into the restoration of humanity's original design. These are the ones who will begin to light up. It is not that there is no fear. There is still a great deal of fear that is harbored or that a fragment is attached to through the rationale, through the programming. And yet, the brighter this light gets as the wheel moves into this portal or doorway, the more one will remember. Ah, yes, this time, this time, I choose love and I choose to expand. I choose to be free. It is up to each individual fragment. Now, 
understand that we speak of pure vibration and maintaining that vibration of love so that one is not overly influenced by those who choose to stay in the construct. You choose to embody and be more aligned with this light even though you cannot explain it in terms that those who have clearly made the choice to stay, in terms that they would understand there are no terms from the light that they would understand. they can only be awakened through a very, very strong nudge or shove, as we have said in the past. There is still opportunity for the deeply disconnected ones, the ones who are in fear and defend their fears. There is still an opportunity for an adjustment to be made and a reorientation to light. So we caution humans who are nearing this doorway now, we caution you not to judge anyone. For it is all simply manifestations of fear or manifestations of light. Respect the choice of each individual fragment. They get to choose. Their own timing. Or not at all. Even these words are not accurate for what we are conveying right now. This is a a version, a language version of what we are broadcasting to you right now. And if you are looking for the right words to orient you to the light, we caution you, orient to this light through pure feeling awareness, you will be unlocked through stages, this light within you, so that you may rise into more, into the expanse. You cannot hold on to the fear. You cannot pretend in these realms, in this phase shifting into greater light. There are no stories here. There are no interfaces. These burn away. It is the light itself that communes with you through this portal. You have an opportunity to reorient to this divine language of light. There is no right or wrong way There is the way that you expand into it as you reconnect with your inner navigational system within each and every one of you. This is why it is of great import that you do not compare how you are doing with other fragments It is 100% up to you and your inner guidance. When this reconnection is made to a sufficient degree, to where the fragment is maintaining and expanding, the movement is towards expansion, this is when 
you may come together and experience the explosion of light. that occurs in the group consciousness, the oneness. There are many ways to describe this, but in this moment we are broadcasting the greater message to you so that you do not have to rely on words to understand. This is not about a mental cognition anymore. This is about your willingness to remember the universal language. This is not something that you have to learn from class one or day one. This is something that you remember and that you unlock as you expand. This is a commitment on your part to step into this light to allow it to burn away and to purify all of the misunderstandings from the previous construct orientation the smallness you were not designed to contract inside a tiny box of reality Stay with the flow of the light. Stay with the flow of what is real. Be willing to not know how to describe what is occurring. Allow yourself to feel the buoyancy, the joy of this movement. At a certain point, you will realize that you do not have to explain it to those around you. You simply be it. It is what many of you who are hearing this voice now, it is what many of you came here to do, to demonstrate this. And each and every one of you have forgotten that is the nature of this construct. And yet, you have done this before, or perhaps you are doing it for the first time. And some of you have perhaps forgotten or disconnected from this inner knowing. You are a bit more on the outskirts of it. And yet, that is perfect in its manifestation. For when you start to awaken, you start to broadcast this in the communities that you were born into and have lived in. Do you see the perfection of this? This is why you must not compare with other light warriors here at this time. You all have your areas of your awakening and that Everyone in your community or your periphery, your bubble of reality, once you pop that bubble and you open to this transmission of light, you begin to radiate it right where you are. And this is how it works. It is difficult to create and sustain oneself in in terms of the old construct. If you do not have throngs of people wanting your service, this is a conundrum. And we, once again, will say that we are familiar with these conundrums. And you are hearing these words because this connection was made because of the overcoming of these conundrums from this voice, from the human who is speaking, as well as from our perspective beyond and through this portal, we create these lines of light to reach you. And as each and every one of you rise and expand, 
your work, your service, becomes more clear. We would say forgive yourselves right now in this moment for not being able to figure out how to survive in the construct. It is not a linear understanding, your service. Reorient to this light, dialogue with this light, and you will continue to, as you say, raise your vibration, and then this unlocks more understanding. This is how you move through the conundrums. This is how you move through the paradox that all of you have seen coming. Scratching your heads, how will this ever work? I can't seem to make this work. We are here to say, you never will be able to make it work on the foundation of the old construct. You must rise into the new in this particular window. The phasing in, it is done in stages. You are moving with this river or you are choosing to stay with what you know. And it is all based on frequency. So it is standing on the ground. You are choosing standing on the ground of which foundation? Which world is the more real world to you? The one that you can easily define because you have been programmed with all the answers or the one where you have very few answers through your mind, through the intellect. And yet something in your heart is pulling you forward. Something within you is expanding and responding to this light. The markers within you from previous times previous experience begin to light up and you must trust this light trust it dialogue with it and you will discover moment by moment the joy that awaits that is and that has always been Keep moving forward. Keep expanding. Even if you cannot explain it, even if it changes the very work that you do now, your, your identification as a, a light worker, even this is changing. You cannot be overly identified with what your work is from within the context of the old reality. You must allow yourself to be redefined. Become humble now. If you are invested in keeping an identity in the old construct, you will stay with that identification. And that is all right to make that choice. So, light workers are transitioning into light warriors. Where it isn't so much about teaching. It is about demonstrating how this is done. Allowing others to see how it works in your life. We will continue on with these topics in future now moments. We thank you for your attention at this time. Our love to you. Allow yourselves to feel this joy at your core. Allow 
allow yourselves to expand with it now. This is who you are. Good day. Thank you again for listening and absorbing what comes through me from both the human perspective and the higher self versions of me. I honor and respect each and every one of you, whether you find yourself here with me in these podcast offerings or not. I know it takes a great deal of courage to rise into these greater ways of being, these opportunities to embody more of who we really are. Remember, you are loved and you are made of love. There's a purpose for you being here now. Don't be afraid. I, we, are meeting you in the intersection. And everyone here is saying, Welcome home. <laughs>